Hello everyone and welcome, welcome to another Explore video. So we are going to be continuing our journey into finishing the Explore Anthology, checking out all the cars that are viable in constructive play. And today we're going to be checking out the Nylia's Presence. It's a two mana enchantment that when it enters the battlefield, you can enchant one of your lands and your lands will have every basic type there is. So which is going to be beneficial for this deck, especially because we are going to be playing Leyline Binding. Leyline Binding gets a cost reduction for how many basic land types you have in the battlefield. So there's some synergy there, getting that easy cost reduction for Leyline Binding. But moreover, the fact that we're playing a five color deck, it's going to be immensely helpful in fixing our mana base. So first of all, what is this deck and how does this play? This is an, an enigmatic incarnation deck. And I was looking at the cards and I really want to play the Enigmatic Incarnation in Historic as well, which is the first thing I try to do. But the fact that Fire's Invention is still nerfed as a 5 mana card in Historic, which doesn't really make sense because Historic is a higher power format compared to Explorer. And Agent of Treachery is also banned for whatever reasons. I do have some gripes about that, so it kind of sucks. But as I was saying, this is a 4 mana enchantment that lets us basically... It lets us sacrifice the enchantments that we control on the battlefield and grab a creature card that is of a mana value plus 1 to the one that you just sacrificed. So, for example, we just talked about Nylia's Presence. It's a 2 mana card. If you sacrifice that card, you can fetch any card from our deck that is a mana value 3 from our deck onto the battlefield. So let's say we need something like, we need a removal spell, then we can grab something like Skyclave Apparition, or we need to exile the opponent's graveyard. We can grab Callous Blood Mage, for instance. Or let's say we're playing as a control deck, then we can grab something like Redane, for instance. And the Mighty Incarnation kind of fills that role as a toolbox, letting us grab what we need at given situations. And conveniently, there's also a 4 mana enchantment we just talked about it, Fire's Invention. Let's just play any cards that we want for free twice a turn, given that you do have the lands on the battlefield, letting us get our tempo back, being able to play 2 cards per turn, and you can also do some shenanigans with Yorion, fetching it back and bounce the Fire's Invention, and then you can play a bunch more cards on that turn. But I guess most importantly, Fire's Invention is good because if you don't have any enchantments on the battlefield, you can go Fire's Invention on turn 4 into Enigmatic Incarnation, letting you sacrifice Enigmatic Incarnation and get something like a 5 mana card from the deck. So that's why Fire's Invention is so important. One combo that we have, most of you probably already know, is the Leyland Binding combo with the Enigmatic Incarnation. Leyland Binding is a 6 mana card that can be played at lower cost as long as you have enough basics on the battlefield. So if you play this before turn 4, as soon as that turn 4 hits and you play Enigmatic Incarnation, and you can sacrifice the Leyland Binding for something like Agent of Treachery or Titan Industry or even Coma to take over the game. Now before we close it out, I do want to talk about one more card that we got from Brothers War. I do believe this card to be quite broken, especially in this deck. And it's this card, Bitter Reunion. It's a 2 mana card that when it enters the battlefield, you can discard a card. And if you did, you draw 2 cards. You can also sacrifice this card for 1 mana and then your creatures you control gain haste for the rest of the turn. Now giving the haste part isn't really necessarily significant. It's not why we're going to be playing. But the fact that you get to draw 2 cards after just discarding 1 card makes this card incredibly powerful in this deck. Because as you may know, we are playing Yorion, so if once Yorion does come down, you're going to be drawing so many cards with this card. You are discarding a card for it, but you are still getting that card advantage in the end, because you're also going to be sacrificing this to Enigmatic Incarnation in the end to get something out of it. You're going to be able to go through your deck a lot easier, especially in a Yorion deck, being able to look for lands, for instance, or even look for answers. And I do believe it is a better card compared to something like Omen of the Sea, which only scries and then draw you a card. But most importantly, the fact that putting something into the graveyard isn't even going to be a downside for this deck because you do have something like Renegade Rallier to get something back or even have something like Kenrith. Since we're a five color deck and you do play four copies of Nylia's Presence, you're going to be able to get something back from your graveyard pretty easily, especially we are playing Fire's Invention and we're not going to be tapping our mana for anything. So that's going to be our mana dump and reviving a bunch of cards from the graveyard. So I do believe the deck got way, way stronger with the addition of Explorer Anthology plus the Brothers War. As for the other cards in the deck, 
you can pretty much mess around with all the one ofs in the deck, especially the creatures, because it is a toolbox deck. So depending on what you need and what decks you're facing, you might have a different experience compared to me. So if, for example, if you don't see that many control decks or mirror matchup, Redane could be replaced with something else. But something like Elder Gargroth, for example, or Titan of Industry, those two you should probably not swap out for anything because this is basically a way to gatekeep a Grease Fang deck since it's a really tall creature with reach or something like Callous Blood Mage, for instance. It's something that you can use to exile opponent's graveyard. But I think something like Omnath, for example, or Zor Eternal Schemer could be something that you can replace with something else. But that's going to be it for the intro. I'm going to be testing this deck out in Explore Best of 1Q to see how the deck does. And if you guys enjoyed the video so far or found it helpful, leave a like, comment below, subscribe, and let's hop on over. Okay, this is a good hand, I think. Uh, let's see. So we have Sabai Triome, which is Mountain Plain and Swamp. But for the Leyline to come on lower cost, we do have to play the Xander's Lounge because we have a Temple Garden. Now if we play the Temple Garden, now it's at one mana. Okay, we're playing against Mono Bread. Could be a Bone Crusher Giant. I think we just play nothing and pass. Yeah? There it is. Sun Scorched Desert. So if they play Mon um, Bone Crusher Giant, we're just going to... Oh, wow. Monastery Swift Spear. I think we take it. And we just trial of a mission this turn so we can have a uh, Ley Lines Binding up for their turn or whatever they could play. Wow. We actually got mega rewarded for actually not playing Ley Line Binding there. Okay. Another trial of a mission. Play the fires. Now he has presence. Okay, next turn is going to be quite insane, huh? We get to balance both Nylea's presence and Yorion. Drawing so many cards. Kumano. Just going to be Bunker's Giant. Wow. Well, I think this is going to be it. This is just too much value. Boom, boom. And... Oh yeah, Fire Dimension. Then we get to play Nylea's Presence again. Okay, if we... Just get one land here. Actually game over with Titan of Industry. Den of the Bugbear. 
Sure. If they want to reuse their removal spell on the Yorion, I'm happy. Reckless Rage. What? Okay. Let's see if we get the other land. Wow. Uh. That's a bit unfortunate. Let's gain some life. What's funny is even if I played Ending Medic here and sacrifice the Leyline Binding, because we drew Titan Ministry and Coma, the only thing that's left is Agent of Treachery. That kind of sucks. Double Eidolon. Still no land. Do I want to take four? Fine. Ow. Let's get rid of the fires. So let's get the Elder Gargroth. That should be game over, right? They're gonna kill themselves. That's actually a pretty good combo. They can make our Elder Gargroth into a 3-3. Yeah, that doesn't really accomplish much since they can't really attack with it. GG's. Okay. We do have the forest, which is the important color that is needed for our hand, for our Nylea's presence to get that white mana. I'm going to play that instead, so we can have double white land. Um... No, we need that for our double white. Probably Archon. Callous Blood Mage. So we attach to the Ketria Trium. Now we have double white. Which is fantastic. Pyre. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, wow. Um, sure. I guess... Okay, I'm gonna play this instead of Fable, so... To get the... Land? Okay, that's... That's pretty unlucky. What are they going to get? Okay. Okay, come on. Why are we playing against an enchantment hate deck? Hello? Yeah, I'm going to play the trial instead of the fable. So the next turn we can play Enigmatic Incarnation and sacrifice a trial so we can get Skyclave Apparition. Because we really need to get rid of that pyre. Uh, 
Oh my god. What is this? They're playing... They're playing my deck? The deck we're playing? Except they're playing Pyre. Is that better? I wonder. Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of their uh, visionary. I'm afraid to play my Enigmatic Incarnation. Looks like they just have so many enchantment removals. So yeah. So yeah, I do wonder if it is better. It is like... Way more narrow though. That's the thing. Oh, that's so good. Okay, let's get rid of that. Because that car is like literally winning them the game. But first, let's attack first. Okay, we're, we're not in a good spot. That is for sure. Because these uh, Legion Angels are quite the problem. I do have the Archon though, so... Okay. Okay, connects. No way. No way. Okay, we have a bit of a problem. Uh, help. Help. I'm dead. Okay, Fire's Invention is really good here. But I'm still dead, right? Because I could get Elder Gargroth and then go up to 10 when they attack, but I still die in the air to 12 damage. So I have to pray opponent blocks here. Because... I mean, going down to two here is pretty scary. Like, they could die to something. Okay, thank god. Okay. So, Fire's Invention. Into Enigmatic. Get the other Gargroth. So, now when they attack, we go up to 10. And then, we take 8 damage. This is, uh, this is scary. This is scary. Because if this Elder Gargroth does ever die, we just lose. So what can we get? We could get that Deputy... So I'm gonna I'm taking a bit of a gamble here. But considering opponent didn't have a way to remove Elder Gargroth last turn, I'm gonna make this move so that I can bounce everything next turn with the Orion to get some value. Yeah, probably Deputy was the correct choice, but I'm taking a bit of a gamble. Okay, truth be told. In my mind, it was like, okay, Deputy exists, but for some reason, I played Fable. 
I'm trying to make up excuses for what I've done. <laughs> Please, opponent. Have mercy. Do they have the top deck? Okay. Woo! All right. It's not that good, but it's not bad either. We have Enigmatic Incarnation. We don't have removal spell, that's what kind of worries me. Um, I'm gonna play the tap land so I can Fable next turn. This way, I can play Incarnation next turn. Okay, opponent is a Memer. We're playing against a get Gate deck. What could they have? They don't have Maze's End in... Oh, they do. Um, We don't need Nylia's Presence. Hmm. I think we attack first. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, it's probably Archon or Omnath, but I'd rather have Omnath. Okay. The thing about going white versus this deck is they do play a board wipe, which only costs 3 mana. So I just want immediate value, something like Opmath. Let's play Bitter Reunion first. Another one. Okay. So what do we get? Redain? That could be pretty helpful. I don't know their I don't know their exact list, but Redain should be pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So Zor gives enchantment into a creature. So we have that sneaky four damage right now with Enigmatic Incarnation and Zor. I think we should just push for damage. They're at four. I think we just get Renegade. Nothing else to get right now.
Draw a bunch of cards. So let's say they board wipe. Then we have four damage. There are two. Okay. Well, that's kind of awkward because I don't have fifth mana. I'm gonna draw into it. Hopefully. Okay, I do think with that could be lethal. So gain trample in haste. Attack. Okay, that was kind of scary because didn't they almost have the win with the Mace's Mind? Uh, it's all right. I don't like the fact that I have Coma in my hand though. Oh, Witch's Oven deck. Witch's Oven. Okay, that's a pretty good start from them. Do I want to keep the untapped land? Like, it's not like Nylia's presence is doing much. Trial of Ambition doesn't really do much here either. This way, I can play Rade next turn. Oh, wow. That is... really bad for me. Okay, so the plan right now is to get to Kenrith and Fire Suspension and gain life every single turn. Will that 5 on the turn come? I don't know. Now, usually, like... Sacrifice decks don't deal that much damage until like later into the game unless like they have devil. But I guess Omnixilis like makes it happen too. Not looking good. We're already at 12. Is there an entire deck just draw cards? Okay, we need our fifth mana. Okay, there it is. So starting next turn, we can start gaining life, which is fantastic. Croxa. Okay, so we have to discard Titan. Then take four. And you lose everything. Pleasure doing this. So we're at six. We're at five. 
Oh god. So if we can play the Kenrith and sacrifice the Enigmatic Incarnation... Okay, let's attack first. Um... So we can't actually, uh, plus one. Doesn't do anything. Don't think you don't think you're some big hero. And I'm gonna put the Yorion back to our hand. So that we don't get, uh, we don't get damaged by, uh, the Croxa. Because I do believe... We are dead if we don't do that. Because we're exactly at 5 now. So Omnixilis plus, uh, Croxa is 5 damage. And cat loop is four damage. My coins are for carnage. Tribute is owed. Oh boy. So funny thing is, I'm actually dead. I wonder if opponent sees it. Like I wasn't dead until they play Voldemort and Epicure, but now I'm dead. Because if they sacrifice a Croxa to the Witch's Oven, they gain two food. Which means they can ping me twice again with two cats. Okay. Since opponent missed it. Hopefully they don't get it with my sneaky heal. Hopefully they don't see it. Yeah, I'm just gonna gain life because they could technically still kill me here, but since they didn't see it, okay. Now the question is, do I attack with the Elder Gargaroth? We're at seven. Is that gonna cost me the game if I don't attack with the Elder Gargaroth? Because I really don't want this Elder Gargaroth to die. Is that greedy? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go for the greed. I'm gonna attack with the Verdane. This could be the greed of the century. And then I'm gonna... Get Skyclave Apparition and get rid of their Croxa. Or is it the oven?
Okay, hmm. Maybe I made a mistake here. I think it was actually correct to play the Elder... I mean, attack with the Elder Garth. I mean, I knew that, but... I, want to, I, I was too greedy. Trying to get this Elder Gargroth to live. Because if I attacked with Elder, Elder Gargroth, if they want to kill it, they have to sacrifice their... Okay, so I think I'm dead. Okay. So actually the correct line was attack with the Elder Gargroth, gain three life. They'd have to trade with Croxa because if they want to kill it, they can't just sacrifice a Croxa to the food. So they wouldn't have two food tokens there. Yeah, this is on me. I think we could have won this. Okay, well, GG's. That's on me. Okay. I am going to keep this. Because we can cast the Pewty and Skyclave and Fable. Ooh. What do we bottom though? So I want to keep the Enigmatic, even though we don't have a green. We need the Fable because we need a four Enigmatic. So it's Deputy. Okay, we really need our green source. Okay, so Fable is our last hope. Please uh, don't kill our treasure token maker. <laughs> okay. I mean, I knew that. Okay. So, Moon Bless Cleric can go. I think I want to bottom Zor as well. Okay, there it is. Green. So, Skyclave Apparition on Eidolon, I guess. Technically, I don't need to because I don't have any 3 mana cards right now. But just for the future. Okay. Wait, they're gonna kill themselves. So, we Enigmatic. You know, I could shock this and play Leyline Binding, but... I think this is fine because we're still getting... this Archon out of it. So yeah, like, I could... you know, shock myself to Leyline Binding, but... I just don't want to take damage right now. Oh wow, this is huge for me. Okay. Do I block though? So I go down to six. But I, if I attack, they're at four. Yeah, whatever. Because if I draw an untapped lane, I could technically win with Kenrith, but I don't think that's worth it, worth the risk. Going down to six. Okay, so Leyline binding on the two two. The the spirit, and then uh, we get the Titan out, and we just win the game.
You know, this actually seems like a pretty good matchup. Because this is our second game versus a mono red, and it seems pretty convincing. 